Feldman's music, Esper's edits, it's time for Gaiden Insert Credit. This is Insert Credit Gaiden, a side story to your Insert Credit main quest. This week, Brandon interviews Jeremy Blaustein, CEO of Dragon Baby and translator for Demon School. He's also translated some of Konami's biggest hits, including Metal Gear Solid, Suikoden, and Silent Hill 2. But enough talk. Have at you! Okay, so we've got another interview. We have Jeremy from Dragon Baby, who, full disclosure, is doing the localization of Demon School. I just have to say that in, in advance. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about your, your life and your career and the interesting things that you have gotten up to. How did you... Because you, you've worked on a bunch of seminal titles, especially a bunch of Konami ones. Yeah. How did this all start for you? How did you... Did you come out here to Japan before that? Yeah, or? yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I started studying Japanese in college. And the why to that is, is because uh, I wanted to speak a weird language, and the Welsh teacher told me that I'd be crazy to study Welsh because <laughs> there's no money in it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I said, okay, let me look back in the card catalog, or the uh, catalog, and, you know, Japanese was my second choice. Interesting. So I studied a couple years. And then I came to Japan, like a lot of people do, as an English teacher. Right. I did that for a year. What year was that? Oh, uh, that was 92 okay. or 1, something like that. I wasn't particularly lauded for my teaching talents. <laughs> sure. uh, um, because I spoke really good Japanese already then, and I would explain you know, grammatical concepts in Japanese, so they, they don't want that for foreign teachers. They just want you to... So speak. read the book. Yeah, just speak English, you foreigner. Shut oh, the fuck right. up. I see. Yeah. Excuse me, can I curse on this? <laughs> As you like. <laughs> yeah, so I left that after a year, and then um, uh, my brother, my twin brother, was working at uh, Konami in Chicago. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, my first job in the industry was actually for a couple months at a company called Jalico. Yeah, I know Jalico. You know Jalico, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was way back. You know, that was that was the early 90s. So, so you had like a little industry experience. A what, what, bit, did, what did yeah. you do at Jalico? Well, I was supposed to be an associate producer, whatever that means. Doesn't mean anything, really. Uh -huh. You know, um, basically, they wanted me to um, talk to Japan. You know, at, at the time, what, the way it worked is Japan would make all the games. Yeah. And then, you know, they'd say, "Okay, we have these six games for you that could potentially be sold in America. What do you think of them?" Yeah. And we would look at them, and you know, be all this weird Japanese stuff, and we'd be thinking, like, "Well, how can we?" How do we sell an example this? would be like uh, that monkey. What's that monkey? Uh, the Chinese uh, legend of the monkey guy. Sure, know, yeah, the, the, monkey, the monkey king. So they had, you know, a monkey game, and, um, you know, we took a look at it, and it's it's super weird. We don't, right. <laughs> nobody knows anything about it. And so we, you know, we said, like, well, if we change the uh, his little head thing, we add one sprite here, it's going to look like a headdress kind of uh -huh. thing. And But that was localization back in the day. Right. Changing yeah. the sprite. So, so you were you were there in the in the very early days yeah, of that. And yeah. So you had done that, and then you moved to Japan yeah. as an English teacher. and then Yeah, and then uh, so my brother at uh, Konami Chicago talked to a Japanese guy who was there and said, hey, can my twin brother get a job interview? And so I went, I, was in, I went to Tokyo, did a job interview, and you know, got the job. But they put me in the business department, so I, hmm. you know, it was very frustrating. Yeah. I would, you know, the R&D, they caught on swiftly that I was the only foreigner in the company, and so they'd start saying, hey, do Americans like this? And then that turned into, hey, can you write this, you know, some text here? And uh -huh. hey, then you can translate this. And hey, can you work on Snatcher? And Yeah, so what games did you work on during... Uh, uh, yeah, there was like... Um, a, I know there's a bunch of them. Yeah, so there would be... Um, the uh, the Rockstar uh, um, Rocket Knights, yeah. both the Nintendo and the Sega. Uh, there was Animaniacs. Uh, I think maybe that was on both too as well. And there was you know there's Tiny Toons and there's Biker Mice from Mars and oh, there's yeah. Snatcher and there's uh, probably stuff on Castlevanias and you know yeah oh um, Contra Hardcore Contra Hardcore that yeah that was yeah. that was actually my first um, time I went to America to. Uh, kind of direct the recording, which is like, at the time it was just like, can you make your ooh a little bit longer? And then, ooh, no, no, no. <laughs> so you were, I think you're getting stabbed by a spear here. <gasps> so there, there was voice directing for was a, tiny, a Genesis game. There was a tiny bit of voice in it. Yeah, there yeah, was. There was a tiny bit of voice. Interesting that you had to. Um, but I, I, I figured they would do that too. in house. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But yeah. my but my twin brother's working at Konami Chicago, so it was like uh -huh. it was funny because he, you know, back in those days there was no email, so we had uh, 
international facts twice a day. And we would write, you know, we're twins, so we'd write these like funny like inside jokes to each yeah. other all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Concert Hardcore, I guess that would be the first like mm. multi-ending game that you worked on as a localizer. Ah, probably, right? Yeah, I suppose so. That's kind yeah. of an interesting thing to think about. Yeah. I never thought about that. So with uh, with Genesis, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo games, you had to work a lot within uh, character constraints. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Character character constraints? You mean emoji, uh, the yeah, line yeah, limitations? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean that's you know that's been something that's followed I mean, my whole career, never. Sure, but they were they were like really really strict at that. Like for for example, I I, mm. I had to localize a um, a Neo Geo game, and you could only do so many um, yeah like Latin yes. characters per line. Yeah, no, you and then you had to. You're 100 percent correct, and it was it was worse back then too because there was so little experience with localization. So yeah, yeah, I mean it would be like you know because in Japanese you can write like attack with one you know kanji. Yeah. And then they want to use what? Like, you know, so you'd have to put like A for attack or D, you know, it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, you're scraping the barrel. Yeah, so how, how did you sort of, I assume you all were kind of making it up as you went along at that point. So like, yeah. what, did you try to give yourself any guidelines or was it on a case by case basis or at some point did you try oh, to like have guidelines? Oh, like you said, I didn't know what I, well, at some point, you know, yeah. obviously guidelines, like when, uh, what was one of the first ones at Vandal Hearts? Mm -hmm. Vandal Hearts. Uh, but also true of Suikoden, um, you'll look at that and there's like, every other line has like 18 ellipses. Yeah. <laughs> because at the time, first of all, there was no LQA. Nobody was going to look at what I translated. Yeah. It just like went right into it. Yeah. And so they give me a text box and, well, the Japanese, if it covered the entire text box, I thought, oh, well, I should cover the entire text box too. In order to do that, I need to put in this many ellipses. and. Uh, you know, there wasn't anyone to talk to. There's literally just no one to. Right, and they would just drop it on me. And there, and there weren't other. Um, there was no other localization no, people for you to talk to. No, there wasn't that. So there yeah. wasn't even the word localization. I didn't hear that word till I don't know. Right, I guess it was just tra years ago. translation at that time. Yeah. It yeah. is translation. Sure. <laughs> Well, uh, of course, there's localization, you know, and and naturalization, which I yeah, like. Yeah, right, uh, right. But it's, uh, it's, it, it's the you know, it's the confusing of the two things. I mean, translation is it's always been translation, and translation itself is localization. Yeah. So it kind of bugs me that people even say that. Like, well, I mean, I guess people are are splitting hairs between direct translation and like more nuanced or, or like uh, in, yeah, what, is, what is the intention it's versus true, the... but those people that want to split those hairs, they do so because they don't, often don't understand the nature of, you know, sort of translation because maybe they're not bilingual so they don't know how much stuff changes just by default. It also could be the uh, amount of time you've been doing this versus the amount of time they've been doing it, it right. that makes yeah. you uh, right, right. <laughs> want to keep that term as well, but getting back to the the Konami stuff. So like mm. Suikoden, there's a lot of. I was no longer at Konami by the time I. You were doing Suikoden. Yeah. Or did, yeah. I, I, so uh, what, what were you doing? By well, I um, I had a I got married and I had a baby. So um, the only way I would have stayed in Japan was if Konami had put me into R and D. And I was supposed to go into R and D. They wanted R and D called me over, mm -hmm. and you know I made the official request to switch over. I wanted to make games. And they, uh, for some reason, the president of the company decided it was better for me to sit at a, you know, computer doing shipping orders uh, that a Japanese person could do ten times faster. So I was in the business department, and you know, I helped out with R and D, but he wouldn't let me go over there. I couldn't get into him, so I went back to America to be a, you know, papa in the country. And uh, mm -hmm. I thought translation would be the best, the only way that I could, you know. Yeah, make yeah. make money and stay. Make in money it. and stay at home. And, yeah, know. and they. Uh, but you continued to do so for Konami. Well, yeah, time. I mean, not exclusively, I, maybe, or uh, no, I wasn't. No, not at all. Yeah, I, 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 I was. You know, I was translating everything back then. I was translating medical patents and electrical things. And okay, anything to earn money, and you know, Konami needed translations, and there wasn't anywhere to go. Yeah. Uh, so right with with something like Suikoden, there's a lot of. Not regional references, but like references, like some of the characters oh, are yeah. supposed to be kind of like other famous characters and stuff. How do you deal with that kind of stuff in, in, in that era? Did well, you, okay. Or yeah, did yeah. you even know about those things at that time also? Well, so first of all, Suikoden, you know, every game's a special case. And Suikoden, mm -hmm. case of Suikoden, you have 108, you know, Stars of Destiny, right? yeah. and, you know, just a massive amount of text. But what we got before the Suikoden team left, 
because what they would do then is they would a Japanese team would finish their game and they'd be like see ya we're going on vacation uh -huh. and they don't come back and they just say at the time it would be like okay here's your text dump get this thing translated so you wouldn't get any uh, zero back and forth with zero them. Yeah. zero wow. zero so um, but, but I didn't tell you the terrible part of it. <laughs> okay so this text dump you, you know you're a programmer you probably understand this much better than I do it didn't have the character names in it mm. <laughs> All we had was the lines for 108 wow. whatever characters. So we didn't know who was talking. And so while we're translating, we had to, you know, I, I hired a bunch of people and I translated and they translated. Um, we, we thought, well, maybe if we split the characters, we'll keep consistent voice. But we didn't even know who what characters were speaking. Yeah. So we're playing the game. We're trying to figure out who's speaking here. Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a, you know, is it a kobold? Or, you know? yeah. Back to the question you asked. I don't think we had that level of luxury it, you know if a translator that was doing it said oh hey this is this character then we'd be like great but you're talking about you know you're talking about time deadlines that don't allow yeah. for anything other than doing your best and moving on yeah and so now it's like funny because you know you'll have people who are trying to become influencers by dissecting games that were translated 30 years ago and mm -hmm. saying hey here's a mistake yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> like, dude, do you know how much time? We had to... <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, people definitely don't. Also, localization is so much more advanced it's now. It's much we, more robust, yeah, certainly. Yeah. yeah, it's people definitely don't think about that. What it was like at that time, yeah. or or largely know that. Yeah, you would just get info dumps or. Uh, yeah, it was just text dumps. Yeah. So with something like you worked on Symphony of the Night, correct? Yeah. So with something like that, did you, you did you? That direct was much better. That was oh no, no oh god no. And you directed the voice. Unfortunately, I did uh, not, as many fans will understand. <laughs> um, a very good friend of mine directed it. Um, unfortunately, he's Japanese, and although he speaks good English, what I've learned over the years is that you can't direct something in a language that's not your native language. You'll just miss stuff. Hey, hey, but the sound was terrible too, was it not? It was. It was very it, peaky. Like, it sounded like they recorded it in a in a in a bathroom. Yeah, but uh, that might be what this podcast sounds like right now too. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't throw stones. I, I want to get back to Castlevania, but first the. But I had that game to play, so. That's good. It was much, yeah, and that's why I changed that line, by the way, because I was playing it. Which line? Uh, what is a man? Oh yeah. 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 I was nice. playing it, and I was like, hey, God, this. I just can't make this Japanese line sound as dramatic as it should when he throws that glass down and so yeah. let me get a different line well it's it's funny when because because you wind up with some of these things that i'm sure you thought about but some of them maybe you didn't think about as much that wind yeah. up becoming it's very true iconic lines in the yeah. future like very true. i still sometimes if i'm interested in something i'll think i'm interested in this which is the weird way that alucard says he wants to browse the shop Oh. He says, I'm interested in this? I'm interested in this. <laughs> that says, sounds like a bad translation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm interested in this. I don't know. I wonder what the Japanese was. Yeah, maybe. So I had the realization at some point when I was, I was trying to direct the voice for a game that I was a creative lead on for Square Enix that wound up getting canceled. But... I realized at some point why some of the voice was the way it was because w they were they were in the in the chat with me. They were like zooming in from afar, mm. and while I was doing these recording sessions, and there was this one lady who just couldn't. She hadn't done game via before, yeah. Yeah. and she she was just like overemphasizing everything and talking like not a human being. She uh -huh. was just going uh -huh. yeah, way, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so I kept being like. Okay, we're gonna dial it back. We're gonna do it more naturalistically. I want you to hit this part. And uh, at one point, the the Japanese folks that were sitting in were like, "Can we just ask you a question?" And I was like, "Yeah. Um, what didn't you like about that? Because it sounded great." Uh -huh. And I realized they liked the. To them, we Americans sound like da 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 do da do da. Right. Like and we we're just bouncing all over the place, and they heard this lady like. Yeah, so they assume that talking if, like a, if, <laughs> like a like a caricature, and yeah. they're like, "That's right. that's right. that's English." <laughs> well, I got news for you. That exact same thing applies to any any person that's dealing in outside of their native language is going to have you know all sorts of holes in their sure. in their game that they don't necessarily know that they've got. Yeah, you know, you could think you're doing a great job, but that's why people don't translate into like. That's why I'll, uh, my Japanese is 
I don't meet people who speak better Japanese than me. But I'll never translate into Japanese. It'd be stupid. Mm. Yeah, I see what you mean. So, like with those recordings and things, you sat you sat in and directed some of those. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so how yeah. how did those back and forths go for like things? Were, were there situations where it felt more stilted, or did you? Like, Are you talking about Castlevania? Oh, I'm talking about whatever. It was not Castlevania, but yeah, uh, yeah whatever. I mean, it's like you said, um, a director. It's a difficult job. You have to be really, 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 really on top of what's happening in s super real time and make super quick decisions. Yeah. You only have one chance for a line, and if you let that line go, so you can't let anything go. You can't just let a voice actor go in there and just get on automatic. You have to. Um, and that's why it's really good for a translator to direct yeah. because they know the voice that they want. Um, and back in those days, uh, as I understand, there was a lot of like getting whatever Americans were around oh, to do video. Oh, you're talking about recordings in Japan? Yeah, 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 in Japan. yeah. Oh my God, yeah. We did Silent, we did Silent Hill 2 in Japan, you know, and it's yeah. like, um, yeah, you're getting, you know, you're getting models to come to your auditions, you're getting people who maybe have done some English textbook recordings. Uh -huh. so no one's a voice actor yeah. um, at, so, at the time, at the time. So what was that like? How did you choose between these people? Just like the, the, the yeah. timbre of their voice, uh, or what did you do? It depends on the, it depends on the, um, on the job, I mean, on the project. So let's say I Silent remember, Hill 2. Well, Silent Hill 2, um, I would say that uh, by the time the, the last day of auditioning came, we still didn't, we still hadn't filled, filled James's part. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any more people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and this, uh, this guy, Guy Sihi, whose, whose kid had come in to audition for the, the, the little kid's part, mm -hmm. he says to me, he says, listen, I'm unemployed. Can I try to audition? I guess he'd like done acting in college and stuff like this. Uh -huh. This guy was, I didn't want to bad mouth anyone, but on the other hand, I'm a truth teller, so I'll just say it like, like I saw it. He wasn't a good actor. Mm -hmm. Actually, he couldn't act at all, and he couldn't adjust his acting to any... You'll find, you know, if you direct, there's certain people that are like, really get what you say, and they'll change their thing. And some people that are completely, in, you know, incapable of doing it. Like, 100% yeah. incapable. Yeah. But what he had was, he was a very depressed-looking guy. And uh -huh. his, and he had no, um, because he couldn't act, he had no um, emotion. Yeah, he had no affect. Yeah, no affectation at all. Um, just a depressed guy. Which and kind of helped. It, it worked. I mean, that's how I saw the character. Some, you know, we talked it over and how we gave it to him. I hoped that he could do a little bit better acting, but, you know, there's that, that, that game, like, like you just said, it was Japanese yeah. actors. We did the best that we could um, with who we had. Some people were brilliant. Mm -hmm. Some people were not brilliant. Um, I mean, I feel like it works for a game like that where it's so um, dreamy slash nightmarish. Everyone um, says that. Yeah. Everyone says that, and I'm really glad that that, that, that worked, but it was just... It's that's kind just of like a accident. happy accident. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Accident. yeah, well, well, good. Although, you know, it was true, though, that I was going for, like, you know, realism, and I, I didn't want any, any of that Troy Bakery kind of... Yeah. Hi there, I'm James, how are you? <laughs> you know, like a radio yeah. voice. I don't, I don't like that very much. That, that would have been odd. Yeah. Um, in those early days, were like the Mega Drive Genesis days, were you doing this in isolation even within the oh, office? No, 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 no. No. So then no, you no. were talking to people. Yeah, I was working in a business office and like I remember Animaniacs came, right? And mm -hmm. we, we licensed it. But the Japanese developers, they didn't know what Animaniacs was. Sure. They didn't understand the humor. They didn't understand the appeal. They didn't understand anything. Yeah. And Konami Chicago, I remember they sent me like a huge box of like VHS tapes of Animaniacs. And yeah. so like I had to watch all of Animaniacs and um, understand the humor, which I, you know, of course I got it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they said, well, you know, we're going to make an Animaniacs game. And the Nintendo guys did it differently than the um, Sega guys. Yeah. But they all wanted to talk to me because nobody understood what, you know, what was the deal with these things. So then they just said, look, can you just write a script? The same thing for Batman and Robin. You know, uh, like Adventures of Batman and Robin? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Genesis one? Foul Play, all well, that's mine. Oh. Uh, Foul, F-O-W. Yeah, very good. Inside references to Jethro Tull and Frank Zappa whenever I can. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. What other places have you inserted those? Snatcher, man. I put in a ton of stuff like that. I got you. You do the video video call to me on Snatcher, and it's like, you know, I got Buddy Guy, and you know, and my you know, my cat's biting me, and you know, I make all these stupid jokes. <laughs> Interesting. And w so with Snatcher, were you wor working with 
Kojima's team or because it, it wasn't Kojima's team. It was it was a team that was dedicated to porting it all over. Right, because uh, which, which Snatcher were you on the Sega? Uh, it would be the Sega CD one. Sega CD. Yeah, because it was it was first on like PC ninety eight and then PC yeah, Engine right. and then. And I think R and D in that time they requisitioned me to come over to R and D for uh, two or three months, and I worked in R and D then. Best time of my life. I loved it. If you uh, if you kept a couple dozen copies of those, you could you could put a down payment right? on a house. Now. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, but you know the thing was it didn't it didn't nobody bought the thing so right. How were we going to think it was going to be worth anything? Indeed, yeah, you you just never know. Yeah. Um, a lot of my games turned out to be weirdy like that, like Castlevania. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, Symphony of the Night really um, it really had legs. <laughs> Didn't and it? and it was beautiful, is, beautiful, beautiful game. Did you work also on then um, Bloodlines? I did Bloodlines. That was before it. That was, yeah, it was before yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Genesis one. Yeah, I mean, I was tangentially involved. I don't, I don't remember really doing anything for that. Okay. Yeah. I think it was like right after I got there. And yeah, so do you have any experience with like with a lot of Turbo Graphics CD games, which I mm, wouldn't Turbo think Graphics, you yeah. Back in the day, um, I, I got sorry, a twin brother. Yeah. I bet on NEC to uh, to be the to winner. Make it? Yeah, and he got a. Uh, they could have. He got the. Yeah, he got the Sega. Yeah, I mean, NEC could have done it. They just chose to make the PCFX after that. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I played. Uh, I played a lot of Turbo Graphics. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of the. Bonk, bonks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bonks, yeah. bonks Revenge. Uh, a lot of the Western releases on the CD mm. had a lot of like. New York accents and stuff, and it, it gave the the real vibe of guys in the office recorded this. Um, uh, which game? Which, uh, which? What are you talking about? Games like uh, Red Alert, mm. uh, aka Last Alert, uh, Final Zone Two, mm. uh, even games like East Books One and Two. Mm. Uh, I wonder if it was East Coast people doing it, or if it was um, something else going on. Yeah, I wonder also. So I was just wondering if you had 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 the experience of like, okay, we have no budget, we're just gonna use guys in the office. No. I don't no, know. never? No. That's, um, that's good. Although I was used as a, you know, we need an extra voice here, I've done that a few times, but. Yeah. I think that people just generally do a New York accent when they, you tell any voice actor, you know, do he's a accent. tough character and they're gonna, be, they're gonna do this, you know, hackneyed yeah. Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, you worked on the Shadow Hearts series. Yeah. Anything interesting about that? A lot interesting about that. Yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> well, let's see Shadow Hearts too. Um, I actually worked on the original Shadow Hearts, mm-hmm. which was a learning experience. Um, I recorded it in New York with the um, the Pokemon guys because my 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 sister was a Pokemon for six years. The voice of Meow. Oh. Eight years. Yeah. Nice. She, she set the voice of me out. I mean, wow. she's more famous than I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Maddie Blaustein, shout out to my deceased sister. Oh. Um, anyway, so we were recording that in, uh, in New York, and um, yeah, it wasn't great, but we did Shadow Hearts 2 in L.A., and we got um, the tall actor, of course, um, what's his name? Um, Richard ah. Epcar, um, who was a great voice actor and, you know, knows a ton of people, and so it was kind of his posse that did it. Nice. And he directed it, and I co-directed it. And when I say co-directed, I just want everyone to understand mm, what that means. In the case of Metal Gear Solid, for example, at that time, that, not what did it mean, but, I mean, directors have different styles. And, you know, my experience on Metal Gear Solid was that I went in, I'd written the whole script, and I had a really, really strong idea of what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Every voice, I knew exactly how it should be inflected, and, um, I wasn't Konami's representative there, but I sort of was, and they thought I was. They thought I, they all thought I was a Konami person, and mm-hmm. so um, yeah, Chris and then she would do the directing side of things. That was like, let's go to this page, and now you're up, and you know all the organizational things. But I felt very much that she was not on top of, you know, because these were all her posse people, and mm-hmm. that's great. It was more was like, oh, that's great, let's go on, let's let's great go on. And I was like, wait a second, you know. Mm-hmm. So I did a lot of voice direction there. You know, and it was good. I, you know, I was really on top of it, and I, I liked voice directing. Shadow Hearts Two is kind of a similar thing. Richard was doing his style, and I was doing my great, great cast. My mm-hmm. God, did you did you play that game? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm a, I don't. 
I, probably, I think that's the best voiceover that you've worked on. That I've worked on, I think mm. so. Yeah, it was great. It's funny script, great game. Yeah, I like those Shadow Hearts games. They're odd. <laughs> they are really odd. Yeah, they're strange. They've got a good like vibe to them, though, like like visual vibe as well as yeah, humor too. And he's also big into history. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely has that like alternate history dark. kind of feeling. Yeah, it's dark too. Yeah. Uh, so I guess you should talk a little bit more about Little Gear Solid as well. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. Did you have some idea of what that would become when you worked on it? I, I mean, coming from yeah. Snatcher, maybe. Yeah, I had some idea. I mean. And because I guess I, you'd read the script, so... Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly wasn't the script that made me think that it was, mm. you know, it was only the, um, the graphics. It was uh. so, you know, so it was so new and revolutionary from my perspective. Plus, yeah, I, I, I was really into Snatcher, and I, I knew Kojima was a, was a storyteller. Yeah. And when I saw the graphics, and, you know, and then the way they started um, promoting it, I, I, yeah, that, I started to get the idea it might be big. And at that point, were you translating things after they were out in Japan, or...? Uh, no. So you, so you were getting, like, early, yeah. early code still? Yeah. Yeah, like, so you were talking about that, or he was talking about the opening scene, the opening scene, the famous uh, sub-scene, you know, so I think I had that on a... That scene I had, like, on a, on a VHS tape. Hmm. And so that you, was the first thing I translated. You still have any of that stuff? Mm, I got a VHS tape somewhere, but I think it's just a promotional. I see. So no, I don't have any. Oh, you know what I do have? I have the three original blue binders that I got from, uh, you know, so I only, I got text, you know, they didn't, yeah. in those days they didn't send you, you know, mm -hmm. there was no digital <laughs> text files, so I got these three huge uh, binders. One was a script and one was like the background weapons and one was like, you know, mm. characters and um, huge amounts of details, background details, um, that really helped me. That's and, cool. Yeah. Well, if you... Uh if you're ever interested in getting that preserved, my buddy Frank, who's also oh. on this podcast, runs the Video Game History Foundation. Well, you know, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Is I mean, that... I don't really know what the... <laughs> I don't think even back then I signed an NDA. <laughs> yeah. Because now that... Yeah. Because the... Um, he'll just scan it and digitize it so that, like, future historians can research it. I lost a few pages. I'm sorry. I remember giving them away to, to like, my... For some reason, my daughter's birthday party, she had friends there, and I'm like, here, here's a... <laughs> <laughs> color picture from my this <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> well still whatever's left yeah is it's gonna, a lot it's yeah a lot. yeah for for whatever projects will be extremely interesting so yeah let's talk yeah, later about sure, that sure. that'll yeah, be cool lot. thinking about other stuff from the old days what were what were your biggest challenges at at that time I, you got your like lack of information a lack of people to to hire from, like a small pool to hire from for voice mm -hmm. talent. Yeah. Uh, wh what other kinds of challenges would you say were, were more unique to that era? Oh, okay. That's a good question. Um, well, I've already mentioned a lot of them. One would be the, you know, the, lack, the, the fact that things weren't digital, the fact that there was no uh, experience in localization, so the teams would just, no support, no LQA. Yeah. No one's reading your stuff, no one's answering your questions. And I'm mindful of the fact that, uh, you know, meanwhile at Square Enix, they have their own localization department, and those guys are getting like three years to translate a game, and they're talking to R and D, and yeah. so it's really frustrating because I would, you know, we would inevitably make mistakes, and mm -hmm. um, there wasn't much to do about it. Yeah, how did it, how would it feel if you like um, yeah. played Secret End and saw a typo? Well, you know, it's like and my kids would find them too, like Dark Cloud Two. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there was this uh, item called, um, you know, all it said was in katakana, it said, um, Denki Goma. And in Japanese, a Denki is an electric. Yeah. And uh, Goma yeah, is a sesame. Right. So naturally we thought it was, uh, you know, because it's written in katakana too, which is a foreign loanword script. So, I don't know, we didn't know what it was. It was just in the midst of, you know, all the stuff to translate. Mm -hmm. So someone translated it as electric sesame. Uh -huh. Turned out it was an electric top. Oh. You know. So, you know, so that's in there. And, like, you have to look for a electric sesame. Yeah. Which you're not going to find, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's interesting stuff. Uh, any, other, any other ones like that that you can remember? Because um, uh, that, that's the stuff that, that kind of... Yeah, well, you know, fans of Metal Gear Solid will fondly recall that instead of me saying that uh, Big Boss was infertile, mm -hmm. I said that he was in a coma. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's different. Yeah. That's different. So, yeah, mistakes happen. But nowadays, we, you know, we have multiple layers of uh, yeah, checks yeah. for this, and it's much more professional um, than it was back then. It just was a lack of understanding of the necessities and uh, the structure. And so it's always a problem. Time's always a problem. Mojis, uh, we're, line limitations are always a problem. Money's always a problem. But mostly time. Yeah. Mostly time. Yeah, and I feel like at that time, there was... There's one more thing oh, yeah. that i got to mention. Mm-hmm. And that's that at the time, we didn't think that localization was anything other than making a product for, the, for this market. That's what, kind of what I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're thinking the same way. It was like, we just wanted people in that region, since it's region locked and they're not going to play it, and we just wanted them to have a good experience. And so that was what I considered my job to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it, it was... In those days, Japan was still the number one market yeah. for them. And right. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, and then... They were only making games for themselves. Yeah, and like, then... even Kojima, he didn't... Like, Metal Gear Solid 1, I swear to God, I don't think he was thinking about the international market, really. Right. Yeah, and, but, and then nowadays, it's like, the international market is the market. Right. Yeah. And so you have to think about it very early yeah. and, and get that all going. Right, that's true. Yeah, it's, uh, it's different times. Yeah, and so that's why when people say, when people talk about these issues of translation versus localization, and in those days, um, I just remind them that, you know, in those days we didn't have the internet, and so no, people didn't think that people from Japan were going to be comparing notes on how something was translated. Yeah, and in fact, they often, uh, as far as I know, I mean, they couldn't read what came back, so yeah. it was kind of like, yeah, it was no, there it is. No thought at all. I guess, how, how do you feel about having accidentally created some iconic lines? I feel in, fucking good. Yeah? Yeah, well, I mean, good. hey. Well, and I'm sure know. some of it was intentional. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to uh, imply that every, everything <laughs> good that happened was an accident. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of it was intentional. Yeah. yeah. But not, die, monster! <laughs> you know, like, I didn't intend for it to be really terrible audio recording and yeah. become ironically... <laughs> It's, it's, the limited translation itself is, is, is pretty good. Yeah. It's like, but the, 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 uh, the actors didn't know that they were... It's weird for me because to some extent with some of these older games, when you retranslate them to be like more natural or more um, modern, mm. they don't work as well for me. And I think it's because a somewhat oh. stilted... I know what you're going to say. Translation matches like I, I what the yeah. game was like. Well, also, some people have this weird idea. They want you to directly translate something from Japanese to English right. because they think it sounds more like Japanese if it's yeah, broken yeah. English. But that, I don't know. Oh, understand. yeah, no, it, it, I wasn't going to go that direction. Because, oh, okay. um, yeah, that, there's, there's... I was actually just talking to 8-4 yesterday, mm. and there's this kind of silly to me debate between people who want, like quote, one-to-one translation, and those who are like, I think that, uh, I personally think that things should be essentially rewritten in English, um, so that yeah. they, well, who, the intent comes Where across. was eight four on that? Oh, they they say if you want a direct one-to-one, then you should learn Japanese. Yeah. Which I and, agree with. Yeah, uh, and go somewhere else, because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, because, because, like, you can't truly do it one to one. No, it's just a fundamental misunderstanding. Yeah, you know, it's just a complete. It's a complete misunderstanding. They're one hundred percent wrong, and I will never back off on that. There's yeah. no way that a one to one translation is going to get you closer to where you want to go. No, no, it's it's because you don't. There's a new. There's a thing called nuance. Yeah, like I was. I was. So I was watching this mediocre anime called Zom One Hundred, mm. and. There's this sequence that I w- that felt like a translator's nightmare to me because there's this lady who's basically her very weak arc is that her dad was always telling her what she should do. So it was like everything suru beki da, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. and she's like, I heard Becky so much, so so many times. I thought my name was Becky. <laughs> Oh, so, oh, like, she, oh, that's the Japanese line? That's the Japanese okay, line. Okay, yeah. Well, that's so not going to work. It's not going to work. <laughs> and, so, and so they they, they went with, he told me... I think he, I could he, figure something he, out. He, he told me I needed to do so many things, I thought my name was Anita. And I was oh, like, great. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, he's got it. But yeah. I actually, I actually couldn't figure out. Oh, actually, what, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense because it's he would say you need. Yeah, uni. exactly. So, so <laughs> that's actually a really. That's actually a really bad. So, mistake. so it, it was like almost there. No, but, no. And but I couldn't figure out why she said that until I paid attention to the Japanese and I was like, oh, he's saying Becky, and then she said, I thought my name was Becky. I had to like. Rewind in my mind, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was because, like, one to one, there, yeah, what would you even do with yeah, that? No. Like, you'd have to explain grammar, <laughs> like yeah. a grammatical structure, times a million, to somebody. Times yeah, it's a million. Just, it's very yeah. silly. So, uh, I guess, I guess, with that, I can, I can let you go here. Yeah, um, you seem to understand a lot about the I, process. If I have more, more thoughts about specific games, maybe yeah. I'll hit you up again, yeah. but uh, that was fun, yeah. yeah. All right, well, thanks, and time to get back to TGS. Get back into the TGS. Insert Credit Guy Den is a production of Insert Credit. Support the show at patreon.com slash insert credit. Discuss with other listeners at forums.insertcredit.com. And find more episodes at insertcredit.com. This episode featured Brandon Sheffield interviewing Jeremy Blaustein, Edited by me, Esper Quinn, with original music by Kurt Feldman. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.